One of the challenges that we have discovered, realized, is that this millennial age has a lot of questions and they're not getting a lot of answers. And sometimes it's not that they're not asking, but that nobody really knows what to say because there are generational gaps. And the Bible says he calls the young because they're strong, but the old because they know the way. Well, if the old that know the way have a communication gap with the young because they're strong, then the next generation of believers is in trouble. And so we're taking this opportunity tonight uh, to have this talk. This talk is on all of our platforms. This talk is on Facebook, it's on YouTube, it's on Instagram, it's on our website. It is on uh, Dr. Hall's uh, Facebook as well. And so uh, we have uh, questions that are going to be um, um, spoken to us and stated to us that uh, so you, they can get a microphone, they'll state those, and then there are going to be questions that are also coming online. <clears throat> and so with these questions, the only thing, that there are a few things that we ask, uh, number one, and that is that we're not trying to attack any organizations or churches or anything like that. That is not the purpose of this. But sometimes within a church or within an organization, somebody can make a decision or something can happen and a person just doesn't understand. And if they don't understand, then we're going to try to explain it to make sure that people are clear. Now, that does not mean that we know what every organization does. We're knowledgeable in a lot of different things. And with that knowledge, we want to be able to share that kind of conversation and that knowledge with each and every individual. Also, uh, um, Dr. Hall lives in um, Florida. Of course, I live here. And he has a personal life. I have a personal life. We don't talk about our personal lives. What we're here to talk about really specifically is simply this. What questions do you have about being millennial? What questions do you have about this era? Um, what questions do you have about what the government is saying versus what the word of God is saying? Sometimes what your family has said, sometimes what your friends have said, sometimes things that you have read, and even some things that you may ascribe to, that you say, well, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Why does the church have a problem with that? That's the platform and the, and the atmosphere that this is for. And so... Um, what we're going to do real quick, we're going to pray uh, together, but after that, then um, we're going to celebrate, and then we're going to go straight into this conversation. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for how good and faithful you are and how you're able to bless us and keep us and direct us. Your Holy Spirit, according to John 16 and 13, is the spirit of truth. He guides us into all truth. And so give us that direction, that clarity uh, that we have to have in Jesus' name. Amen. Dr. Hall, if you would. Um, first of all, um, let's talk about, um, and we'll get to those questions in just a second, but let's talk about some of the things that you have found in this age, in this era, that you think that millennials may need to hear, may need to understand about our era versus their era and what that looks like? Well, well, it looks totally... Would you take t turn his microphone up just a bit, please? Well, well, let me say this. It looks totally different. There we go. There we go, testing. It looks totally different because our parents raised us different and then our parents' parents raised them with a set of foundational rules that somewhere got dropped off. Mm -hmm. Let me make it this simple. We never got up and didn't say good morning. If people were in the house and talking, we said, excuse me. Um, we ate at the table together. We had to say the prayers together. Everything now, your bedroom is your everything room. They can take their food to the room, eat in the room, their phone is at the table. So many distractions. Modern technology has increased the ability of us to spread the gospel, but also to destroy the family. I think that with that, 
uh, there has been a lot of misunderstandings. And you're 1,000% right. Uh, the cultures are different. And so I think that this is why being in those rooms, what you're saying, causes them not to be able to answer or ask a question to the person that can answer it. And sometimes if they ask the question, they're told, don't ask any questions, just do what I say. But that doesn't stop the inquisitive mind of saying, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, with that, Robin, um, you have some questions for us. We're going to get into these questions and just kind of like set them up and knock them down as quickly as we can. And let, let, let me say this, because this man been fasting 31 days. He looks slim, y'all. Y'all pray for him, right? And um, so I'm not fasting. I went to get something to eat, and I ate it where I went because I didn't want to tempt him. But um, I had a young man behind. He said, sir, how may I help you? Yes, sir. I've not heard this generation say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am in a long time. Mm -hmm. They've gone back to what we got slapped for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is not just, like my son said to me, if we're doing something, then it's you all that allowed it. Mm -hmm. That was a hard blow for him to say, if we have someone in our family that is addicted, you watched it happen. Hmm. So whatever we did, they're blaming my, my parents, and whatever my parents did, they're blaming that their parents were not on point. I don't know how this is gonna go tonight, because as far as I'm concerned, my parents parented well, but some of the things they said the Bible said was not in there. Mm -hmm. That's where mm -hmm. I am. This is going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to ask you all to do, before she reads this first question, I'm going to ask you all to do something for me because it may be the only time we have it tonight. Everybody clap. because it's, 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 it's <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Robin, um, just uh, go ahead and ask the question, and we're just going to go there. Okay, first question, are black people the chosen people to endure and suffer. I mean, you go ahead, you have fun with that. <laughs> um, are black people the chosen people to endure and suffer? I think, um, no, I don't think that black people are chosen people to endure and suffer. I think that people endure and suffer based on whatever culture that they are. I think that everybody's endurance and suffering is different um, based on your culture and based on um, your belief. Now, with that being said, um, I am going to say that blacks, uh, blacks and Jews have suffered more than probably any race. Um, I, and I, I love history, so I do know other races that have suffered very badly, but blacks and the black race and the Jewish race have suffered um, more intensely and more open. Now, is that God's will? I can't say that that's God's will. I, f I can say that that is man's interpretation based on the mindset of a culture, but I can't say it's the will of God. But I do believe that because a person or persons endure something consistently, you have an ability to have resilience and ability to be able to handle it in a way that other cultures cannot handle it because they did not have that, they did not have that kind of attack that was on them. And that is my perspective. I want to give the short version because it's not good to have two PhDs up here using big words. So he's going to use all of the words, I'm just going to keep it simple. Black people should be admired for all of the things that we've experienced. We have the toughest skin on the planet. I don't believe that we, I don't believe that we were created to suffer, but we suffer better than anybody else because we fall down and we get back up. Black people also, I believe God, when he gave us melanin and skin, he gave us that for a reason. 
as a protective coat because he knew that we would go through more, live more, eat different, and et cetera, and that we would need to have a certain amount of melanin to get through our crisis. But here's my scripture for anybody black who claims to be a Kushite, Ethiopic, dark skin, burnt face. And the more they afflicted us, the more we multiplied and grew. Mm -hmm. So no matter what they do to our generation and our culture and our ethnicity, we're gonna keep coming back stronger and stronger. Most definitely, most definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, this is um, two people asked the same question, so I'm gonna kind of merge them. Why did people get sat down in church after sinning? Where did it come from? Back in the day, if you did something wrong in the church, in the church eyes, you were sat down if you worked in ministry. If you fail or fall short, should there be a period in which you stop serving until you got your mind right, or should you serve until you're delivered? Okay, well, where did it come from? It came from Moses with his sister. Uh, that's where it started, uh, because uh, Moses' sister had an issue with who he married, and God gave her leprosy because of her mouth, and as a result, she was put outside of the camp and there could be no movement. She was separated from everyone else. And because she was separated from everyone else because of her sin, then that is originally where it came from. Now, the next part of that question, because I need to hear that question again, because it's a long question. But go ahead. Back in the day, if you did something wrong in the, ch in the church, you were sat down if mm -hmm. you worked in ministry. So if you fall short... Should there be a period in which you stop serving until you get your mind right, or should you serve until you're delivered? Um, I think that it all depends on the situation. Um, there are some things that, that you need to keep serving until you get yourself together, and there's some things you may need to be sat down, and the reason being is because uh, if you are cut, if you cut your hand while you're cooking, you don't need to be bleeding all over your food. And That's so the good. same thing when it comes to people, you don't need to keep uh, bleeding all over people, damaging people, and because uh, sometimes some of the people need to be sat down are not people that fornicated. Some people need to be sat down to people that are mean, because some of the people that That's are good. mean um, have damaged a lot of people as well, run them out of the church. And so we have to deal with sin as being sin and not what type of sin uh, in order to address it. Um, is there another part of that question? No, that was it. Okay, no. My problem is the people that are sitting us down should have sat down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, when y'all clap, don't pity pack, clap loud because we got a lot of people watching. But what I'm saying is. I'm a pastor's son like you. I uh -huh. grew up in the church. That's all I know. Uh -huh. Okay, I had to learn my other lifestyle outside of the church with the minutes I had. Uh -huh. But the people who sat me down are the ones who taught me to do what I did. Uh -huh. But they never got caught. Uh -huh. So I kept their secrets while they told me, sit down. But one day, they didn't have an organist at our convocation. And back then I was the organist. I had got caught in a sin. I was supposed to be silent for 40 days, whatever. They choose the time. They have no organist. They having a holy convocation night with no organist. They came to me, Todd. I said, yeah, get on that organ. I said, I'm silenced. The one that signed me, the bishop came and said, I said, get on the organ, you're not silent. See, they only need us when we're necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm thinking that the millennial's problem is not that we're silenced or rebuked. It's how they do it to us when they're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to silence me, just don't be me. Make sure you're the opposite of what you are condemning. That's all I'm saying. I don't play the organ no more. I don't play the drums in church no more. I don't do anything I used to love 
because they kept telling me, do it, sit down, be holy when you do it. It was a talent. What I was giving them was a talent. How do you silence my talent for my lack of character? I'm giving you a talent. I'm playing the drums for Christ. I'm a supplement. I'm a vitamin. So now when you stop me, all of our musicians now play gigs on the road with Mary J and everybody. They don't get silenced. They get paid. But now we want their tithe. We want to say they're our member. But back then, you couldn't play for both sides and be saved. No, you I'll leave that alone. All I know is this. I'm the millennial... baby boomer mixture I don't want anyone criticizing me for something that they're doing mm -hmm. I agree no you don't yeah I do no 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 I, I agree but but I think that I think that we have to also look at the fact that it goes back to what I said before and that is that there are some individuals that can bleed worse than others and I'll say I'll, I'll put it from this perspective and that is that the person that sat you down, but they were, um, but they hid theirs better. All right. But then you have someone that's not hiding theirs as well, and they're damaging innocent people. Then, it, then at some point, they have to be addressed. At some point, it does have to be addressed because we still have a responsibility for what Paul said, um, when I'm a babe, I desire the sincere milk of the word. And if I am a babe in Christ and I'm dealing with somebody that's been in Christ for 20 and 30 years and they're experienced in what they're doing, they can damage that babe. And you don't put a pedophile in there with somebody. You, you can't do it. So that's why I'm saying that I agree. And I, I agree. But in my agreeing, I still say that we still have a responsibility of these babes that, that are in Christ and some of these olders that they have been in God, but they have found different ways to have a different kind of lifestyle. I fully agree. I just think they need to hear both sides because my issue is they bled all over me and that's fine. But my generation, which was yours and our parents, mm -hmm. we learned how to keep what went on in the house in the house. That's the truth. But now, nothing is in the house. Everybody hangs outside more than at home. And on Facebook and on Instagram yeah, Facebook, and everywhere else. Facebook, the phone. And once it's out there, you can't take it back. Mm. Mm. So don't uh, sit me down uh, for being an effeminate man and I find out that you're a homosexual bishop. I'm stuck there. Because mm -hmm. you're going to do one or two things to me. You're going to make me either regret or become what you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The church needs a ministry where people can get therapy. Mm -hmm. So that when they have been exposed to what they should not have been exposed to, the professional therapist or pastor can determine whether they should be silenced or not. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. We need a mechanism put in place that says, this person that is pregnant cannot be silent. You mm -hmm. don't need to know all the components. Mm -hmm. And this person has to be silenced because we've determined that the components that are in place says they need a break. But they ha there has to be a trust there. Yes. Because if people are, if they're saying that there's a double standard, then they don't understand that, no, I got to keep this person working. Because if I don't keep this person working, this is what's going to happen to them Absolutely. versus this individual that's going to bleed all over everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Robert? Yes. I have an online question. Why are there so many denominations and doctrines? Which one is the one? <laughs> That's for you again, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. <sighs> Different denominations and doctrines are based on people's interpretation of Scripture. The problem with the interpretation of scripture is based on people's education, their background, their understanding. I'll give you an example. Um, there was an old preacher that said, 
The wedges of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The wedges. Wedges. And um, that you put a wedge, you put a wedge in the door. I can't even say it right. You put a wedge in the door, and it stops you, and, and this, that, so, so, so and, and it stops you from living right, and this, that, and the other. And then uh, someone told him that, that it's not a wedge, it's a wage, and they got rebuked. So I think that what we have is a lot of denominations, y'all forgive me. Um, I think we have, what we have is a lot of denominations based on a couple of things. Number one, based on education and understanding. Um, the, if you're reading the word of God based on a English translation and your understanding of English translation, you're going to have a problem when it comes to full interpretation because now you have to understand it from um, Hebrew and Greek, Aramaic, and that's what a lot of um, more effective preachers are doing now. They're learning or they have learned that I need to know the original understanding of what it meant. Um, there are some things that I don't want to say, um, but I will say this, and maybe it may come up later, but there are some things that we can say in English that it means opposite of that when it comes to Hebrew and Greek. And then if you're trying to, if you're ministering it, you're going to have to minister it based on, on the truth of what really it was meant. Because if not, then you have a problem. So denominations splintered. So it splintered based on education. It also splintered based on culture. The cultural aspect of it was the AME Zion Church um, came forth because um, the Methodist Church had whites at the bottom, blacks at the top, um, when it came to um, a church. So the blacks were in the balcony, whites were on the floor, and so the AME Zion Church, African Met uh, Methodist um, Episcopal Church, then they came from 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 not being able to be treated equal within that regard. So you have uh, interpretations. Let's deal with Southern Baptist versus um, um, Baptist versus um, the, um, what is the New National Baptist? National Baptist in the full, 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 full gospel. gospel. Um, and all of that is based on the fact of, do you believe in speaking in tongues? Do you believe in laying hands on the sick? Do you believe in casting out devils? What full gospel does, um, and there were certain Baptists that did not. So what you had is denominations and splinters. Then you have uh, Church of God in Christ. You have apostolic. You have... Um, you have Unitarian, you have Trinitarian, you have uh, Methodist, you have God knows. And so all of it, when I, when I look at it, I look at it as simply somebody got an attitude because they did not like the fact that you believe a way that I can't get with. And as a result, I'm leaving, I'm going to start my own church and I'm going to start my own denomination. And now we are... Um, we are Church of God. We are Church of God in Christ. We are Unitarian. We are Unitarian Plus. We are... And, and all of it is really based on uh, interpretation of Scripture. That's really what it is. Now, if you got all of them in the room and you started uh, pinning them down to certain things, ultimately, um, the majority of them are saying the same thing from a different angle and a different perspective, but because you've been so committed uh, in what you have believed and what you've said, now you just kind of stay separated, and which is also a denomination, the separatist. And so you stay separated um, within that. Lord, if I told you all every denomination, it is just insane. But the same thing happened. So what happened in the church splintered over into the street. And so now you have gangs that are rival gangs because one splintered out of one and then one splintered out of another and one splintered out of another because that spirit was released within the world and so now you have the same thing when it comes to the world as well as uh, when it comes to the church. That, can y'all remember all that? Y'all got your phone on? I think y'all should give a great hand clap for that particular exegetical. Um, here, here, when I grew up, 
there was only one church that was the right church. They were called the Holiness Church. There was only one church. Uh, they called it the Holiness Church. Most of them were storefronts that, that, that they believe in tongue speaking, casting out demons. You had to get to the altar, make it up front, call Jesus, vacillate, salivate. And if you went through that, you were part of the Holiness Church, St. James Holiness Church. Um, but the truth of the matter is this. We call ourselves Christians, but it was the world who called us that. Okay, that's not a name Jesus gave us. That's not a name that, that the, the disciples gave us. The world called us that, and we kept that name. Mm -hmm. they, we kept the name that they gave us. So, burst, so basically, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. We've accepted whatever they called us, which that should mean I walk like Christ, I admire Christ. Now, the issue is uh, Christ must be walking 50 different ways now because there's no way that everybody can be saved living the way that they're living. All right? So I concur with uh, Dr. Williams in that, and this is where I want to let it go because it's real touchy for me but every time someone didn't get paid or get ordained or licensed they left mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every time I'm gonna get some water on that by God yeah drink it for me too. yeah I'm gonna get some water on that time you have let's say you have your 5,000 members and you have 12 preachers that are in rotation that you use throughout the year mm -hmm. but all of a sudden God reveals to you there's a member in your parish that you need to elevate and let him or her preach. Now, out of the 12, if five of them never preach and you let a newbie come in and preach, mm -hmm. they're going to hold a five council meeting mm -hmm. saying, why did he bring? And at that time, those five are going to start their mission statements mm -hmm. and stay in your church an extra year while they put seeds in other people's ear. Mm -hmm. Now we have New Jerusalem Zion Apostolic Better Church of the Ministries in Greensboro, whatever they want to call themselves, right? So at the end of the day, believe it or not, all of these denominations won't tell you that they have one parent. Because if they all speak about where they're from, where they're from needs to hold a meeting. Because there shouldn't be this many Denominations. Give an example. My father then moved us from the Holiness Church to the Church of God in Christ, the Grand Old. You cannot join in. You've got to be born in. I have several of the bishops watching me in the private chat room right now. That's why this is up, and I know they're watching. It's over. Yeah, it's over 174 of them uh -huh. in a private. You can look right there in the private uh -huh. chat room. Hey, I'll let them see you. They're in the private chat room, right, doing their thing. And here's my point. When they sat me down, I'm a researcher. We have to remember our great grandparents couldn't read. Mm -hmm. Right? So God gave miracles because he honored their heart. Each generation got more accessibility to knowledge and wisdom. Now God won't honor you because you won't put in the work. Mm -hmm. Right? So now that we've learned that what they said might be wrong, the issue is they're still right because what you said, you have no research. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you're getting information to prove them wrong. But God said they were right because they didn't have the access to the things that we have access to. So we are so busy trying to prove who's right and who's wrong to where nobody wants to go to church anymore. Church of God in Christ. Three men went together to Azusa. Three men were all Baptists. They three, these three men, this is a ledge, I'm going to bless you, came back and they started one movement. There was one movement. They were Baptists. They spoke in tongues. They got delivered. They came back. They started a movement. These men then also licensed the first, the first assemblies of God. They ordained the assemblies of God ministers, these three black men. Well, out of the three, one of them were invited to speak at the Assemblies of God's Convocation, whose name was Apostle Satan. When he spoke, the other two got offended and one left and started P.A. So this is how this happened. And believe it or not, even though you call Church of God in Christ Trinitarian, if you studied it from the foundation, it was 
in Christ. All of them were a part of it, which meant they believed in Christ. P.A.W. took it and made Jesus the feature. It all came in place. But because a certain group praised one man over another, it caused a split. The same Saul, because the women said, David killed his thousands. I mean, Saul killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. Saul's heart turned against him. So a lot of denominations are here because they turned against somebody. Mm -hmm. Let's have it. Okay. Is masturbation wrong? <laughs> For women, two weeks post cycle. <laughs> for women, two weeks post cycle, her libido raises and men oftentimes wake up aroused. You can't pray away natural sexual arousal. For some people to not fornicate, they masturbate. What are your thoughts? But first, you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You keep looking at me to start first. Mm-mm. I'm not even looking at you. I'm not looking at you. We're going to answer it. Listen. <clears throat> you. <laughs> the, let me come from the area of research. The safest sex in the world is masturbation. You can't give yourself an STD. You can't get yourself pregnant. You've not hurt anyone. Now, that's what I want to say first. At least you will know who your baby's daddy is not and is. Because it is the safest sexual experience that God has allowed man to have. I also believe he will bring you what he needs to bring you. I also believe that when God said it is not good for this man to be alone because there was not a help me found for him so I shall make one for him. I am sure that if the sexual drive was already in Adam that he probably masturbated. I need people to understand there is no human being with a high sex drive at home who's not fornicating that's able to run from themselves. See, when you're fornicating with someone, the Bible said flee. You get to run, but what is it when you're home by yourself and you just start running around the house? <laughs> right? It takes a different like, I'm running from me. Loose me. <laughs> Problem with it in male and female is the male species, when men have done it, even though, you know, y'all thought we'd be afraid of this question, but I'm not afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. When men have sex, period, and they're normally through, they're through. But if women start foreplaying, they, they get mad if, if the real thing is not present after that. So women be like, no, I don't play with myself because then I want the real thing. See, see, it's different. Men be like, I'm done. I'm going to bed. It's two different experiences. I know why you didn't want to start this conversation. Because I, I started, I always start. You need to start. Yeah, no, but you always start with, and in the word of God, we have a magnificent, right? But the issue is, I... Let me go as far as he would go, then he'll clean all of this up. <laughs> I went to school. I went to several schools. But I have a rabbi who is still living at 85. And every now and then he'll turn on like he is to hear me minister and dare me to tell the truth. So he claims, this is, this is a Jewish rabbi, that when God made man, he made man, hear me, and basically an hermaphrodite, that it was a man with both sexes. Now, I could say that that could be true because there are people still born that way. There are still hermaphrodites today. Mm -hmm. 
at that time, in the beginning of the ages, it could be the parent's job to determine what the predominant sex of the child would be. So he says that when God put man to sleep, God made a decision to make Adam male and took the genitalia, we say the pelvis, but it's Salah, T-S-E-L-A-W, Tisalah, but the T is silent, Salah, he took out of the man the rib, but it was not the actual rib, it was the pelvic area, and fashioned a woman, which meant he took the genitalia that he was not using, put it on a woman, so that when Adam woke up, he didn't have to learn how to have sex, because he had been touching himself all the time. The issue is this, you will never be a great sexual creature with a mate if you don't know how to please yourself. Now I'm in trouble right now and I'm cool with that because anyone practicing with a professional is, is gonna lose. And you need to be able to tell your husband, even as a virgin, what he must do to please you. You cannot let people abuse you because you have no rights to yourself. Now, is masturbation a sin? I'll let him tell you that part, but I will tell you, I will tell you that there are children that do it. There are mentally ill people that do it. There are animals that do it. It's innately embedded in people. Those who don't do it, they find it very hard every day not to do it, and then they are waiting for the person who will introduce sex to them to be supernatural. I hope they are, because if not, you did it to yourself. Now, come on, scripture, biblicist, theologian. All right, so. Hit, mm. <laughs> Is masturbation a sin? That was the question. <laughs> okay, so first of all, one, I don't have any scripture. There's no scripture that is against masturbation in the word of God. What? There is no scripture. Wait a minute. <laughs> There is no scripture in the Word of God. I, can't, I just can't believe you said it. It's it's well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. There is no scripture. <laughs> I am not messing with him. There is no scripture in the Word of God that speaks on masturbation that says anything about masturbation. Nothing. All right. So we have to also look Your at the mothers in here. Shepherd mothers in here. Thank you. Thank you very much. You got a lot of people ever since we started talking about masturbation. Well, we got so many followers right now. Oh, Lord. There, I can't mess with him. There is no scripture in the word of God that addresses masturbation at all. You just want me to keep saying that. All right, so here's the deal, though. The problem is, is that masturbation is also connected to your imagination. And because masturbation is connected to your imagination, in your imagination, then there lies sin. All right? And that's why the scripture says in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. It is very difficult. I'm not going to say it is impossible, but it is very difficult to masturbate without having an imagination because it is your imagination that then strengthens the masturbation to come to a result. So what's the sin part? Who we are thinking about or what we're doing to a ghost in our imagination? Which is, who did we get pregnant in our imagination? <laughs> because, because, all of that, because all of that is still the mindset and the conversation. I'm going of, to, I just no, need no, no. answer as a millennial because that's what I'm going to ask next as a millennial. Be, well, it's... Like well, I might be thinking about Jada. What is, am I committing adultery with Jada? <laughs> No, I'm serious. No, be well, the, the thing is, is that fornication actually starts before, before fornication is physical, fornication is spiritual. And because fornication is spiritual, people don't look at fornication as being spiritual. People don't look at, at masturbation as being spiritual. They don't look at any of this as being spiritual. They look at it as being physical because they're operating in the fruit of what their mind produced. And so the action is the fruit of it. But the imagination and the thought of it is the tree of it. And so that's where lies in the, the sin itself. And that's why um, if you uh, look upon a woman to lust after her, you've already sinned within your heart because now it is a thought mindset because every, when we're dealing with sin, especially when it comes to anything with sexuality, fornication, 
it always starts it always starts spiritual first because it is an intellectual and spiritual introduction initially and i know that I, we've got a whole bunch of questions but my my question is do i need to go deeper in that see the answer is going to be yes that's why all these people on here because they want to hear whether dr kevin a williams is going to tell us whether masturbation is a sin <laughs> Mas masturbation. No, no, I'm cool with the fornication part, but the masturbation part. The masturbation still is a result when you when when no, a. No, no, I'm saying you made a scripture that I'm with you on, but when Jesus referenced that scripture, it was because the deeper religious sect were judging people who actually fornicated, and then they were acting deep like they don't fornicate. So Jesus said to them, "If you look upon a woman, lust in your heart, you have sinned." Mm -hmm. He was talking to the deeper group that keeps silencing the other group, mm -hmm. right? I, and then you said there's no scripture for it, which I'm with you, but the issue is this. My imagination, when I was younger, just came running away with me. Mm -hmm. You don't know about them songs. You don't have time to sing. That's just my imagination <laughs> running away with me. Back then, he was still dealing with James Cleveland, y'all. So, I was out I'm there. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I was. <laughs> he's still paper Bible saved. Y'all see, that's a paper Bible. Listen. I need to free the millennials. Then you do need to go a little deeper by saying, this is me, and I take the blame for those watching me. I'm not sure whether it's a sin, but I believe it can lead to sin and make you want to sin because once you start, you want to experience an, another high, another high, and another high. But human instinct, I don't know many people who have not masturbated or found it with themselves, but I will say this. If you have to have an experience, the safest way is to have it with yourself. Mm -hmm. Period. Today, there's too many STDs, too many rapists, too, just too many teenage pregnancies. And we don't have enough parents talking about sex in a healthy way to the children. So the problem is not masturbation. It's no parental participation. Mm. I agree. Because my parents ain't talked to me about sex at all. And you know your mama's in here, but my mama ain't in here. My parents, <laughs> now she might be driving here now if she wants it, but... But they didn't talk about sex enough. Birds and the bees, flowers in the trees, that was just not good enough. Birds and the bees don't mean nothing to this generation. Mm -hmm. They want to know why does God see any of this, in marriage or out of marriage, as sin when he's the one that put the sex drive in us? The sex drive is not the sin. Right. It's where you drive in. That's where the sin comes in. And so... We have to be able to, you're not going to be able to stop a sex drive, and a sex drive is natural. Everybody has a sex drive. But you also are in control of how fast you drive. And sometimes you need to pump the brakes on that sex drive because you know that once you get on the Autobahn or the highway, you're gone. And so, that's just the truth. You're gone. If you text while you're driving, you're going to crash. Most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. So I, I think that is why it is important because when people uh, ask the question or they say, God, you know, because they want to be so saved, Lord, take my sex drive away. That is not a prayer that you should pray. Can I tell you the truth? Mm -hmm. I did that. Mm -hmm. No, no, I did that when I was 24. I had become an elder in the church and I grew up with the church old mothers making me believe that I had a sex demon because I would confess to my elders. We grew up in that church. Mm -hmm. He took it. I begged him to give it back. No, seriously. Mm -hmm. When I started waking up and nothing was responding, they were thinking, no, no. Some, at 24, I thought something happened. I went, Daddy, I need to go to the doctor. He's like, boys, won't you? I can't tell you. You couldn't talk to nobody about it. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want the millennials to have to pray that type of prayer mm -mm. or believe in anything like that because we were not explained it the way that you're doing it. 
I don't ever want people to have to resort to go to, to, go to the creator and ask him to remove what he gave us because no one could explain it properly. That is not God's will for him to take something that he gave you. Something that he gave you, it's supposed to be there. But drive it in the direction that he tells you to drive it. And use it in the direction that he tells you to use it. Um, this is a spiritual matter. And a lot of times people are thinking that it is just biological. But the truth of the matter is, it's not just biological. We are spiritual before we're biological. And after our biological is expired, we go, we're still spiritual. And so there's a spiritual anatomy, you've heard me say it, and there is a natural anatomy. And we have to be able to balance um, the two and understand the aspect of the spiritual and the natural, uh, the, um, the male and the female, and the drive that's in them both and how that works. Um, wow. They're telling me they've got, we've got a lot of questions. I'm gonna try, I'll try to get, go ahead, go ahead. There is a second part to that. Um, <laughs> trying hard to abstain from sex, but it's getting very hard. It's getting a dildo and using it to hold me until marriage is sin. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, Lordy! Go ahead. Go. Now, we said we would not shy away no, from anything. No, we're not going to shy away from anything. But y'all are here trying to provoke us. We have a healthy first group audience. But I think this is extremely important. So I'm going to let you tackle it alone. <laughs> because your answer would be much better than mine. I promise you. Okay, so, so here's the problem. Um, and I think that the question was, was basically having something artificial to maintain you. No, they said a dildo. Okay. I'm going to rewrite the question of the millennials. They'll get offended. All right. They want you to use their words. Okay. Would you read the question again, please? They should have wrote it in their pastor's verbiage, but how was it asked? I'm trying. <laughs> no, no, read the question. Yes, sir. Trying to abstain from sex, but it's getting very hard. It's getting a dildo and using it to hold me until marriage a sin. A dildo can't hold you. So and let's the reason why I said, don't say artificial, say dildo, because it can't help me at all. Mm -mm. A dildo can't hold no, you. I, no, I'm a man. We don't, no, we don't use no. it. No, but, but well, here's the deal. Number one, a dildo can't hold you. Number two, you're damaging your relationship with your husband, who is to come. And the reason being is because the dildo is setting an expectation. And so because the dildo is setting an expectation, by the time he comes, then because he is not what you expected because you bought your imagination. Men are not battery operated. We are also not battery operated. No, no we're not. Because we don't just keep going and going and going. I'm saying if that's what's comforting her, battery operated at will whenever then she's gonna miss a truthful expectation of how to get a man ready as quick as that battery operated. I, it's, it's, I, I 100% agree. Because I'm already crazy. So okay. when they get married, can, can they use it together? Can they use it together? When they get married, uh -huh. and she wants him to bring a toy in, can they? Well. I can't, I can't say yay or nay. I will say this. The Bible says the bed is undefiled. And because the bed is undefiled, there's still boundaries in that, but the bed is undefiled. See, but there are women in here looking crazy. What if you're married to your husband, he gets sick, he cannot function, but he can still find ways to please you? That was a, that was a critical question. 
You see how you got quiet now? What if you dry out and we don't like you? I <laughs> love These things in life will occur. There has to be some type of entertainment and enthusiasm in your marriage bed. Mm -hmm. Now, how you do it is your issue. But my thing is, forget what we do as a single. Some things that we say is not right in one area can be enlightenment and a higher thing in another. You just think about that while you settle there thinking that you the beast. You can be a beast in bed and not be the best. See, I see women rolling their eyes, looking in the air. It was a millennial question. When I hear my millennials talk, the questions are deeper than that. When my kids sit and say it the way they want to say it, sometimes I have to drink some more water. Mm -hmm. But they're like, Dad, come on, you from Brooklyn. Stop being so deep. Tell me the truth. Do you actually believe everything you're saying? That's what I'm asking some of you. When he said a dildo can hold you, it's like, amen, but you hold it. Wow. All right. Go ahead. See, I'm a prophet. About 10 of you in here have one. It's I, quiet. Indeed, I thought this was a conversation. I did not know that God was going to... It doesn't no. matter to me. The issue is, are you here to hear the truth and then redesign your life around something that's a little more healthy so that when you move into the arena of marriage, you don't have to outsource? Mm -hmm. No, that's the truth. If we don't control our imagination, our imagination will get us in trouble. And we're going to have to have some level of boundaries. And that's why I quoted the scripture that cast down the imagination. Because if we don't bring some level of boundary or control of our imagination, then it's going to be like taking a hit of a drug. Once the high doesn't get to you, then you go to the next step and you go to the next step and you go to the next step. Well, when do you stop? You know, the word of God teaches us that the Holy Spirit brings us into truth. He's a preserver. He, he helps us to balance ourselves because the way sin works, we just keep going further and further and further and further and further. At some point, you got to stop. At some point, you got to stop. So we have to know exactly what it is. We don't have a problem. And I'm telling you right now, we don't have a problem with any of these questions we really don't I'm, I'm 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 really just not concerned about the questions um i would say that who probably would have more problems with these questions and the way they were answering it is an older generation that doesn't want to have this conversation that doesn't That's understand cool. why we're having this conversation but you are the generation that we have to pass all of this to and if we pass on ignorance to you because if we don't answer you that's what we're giving you ignorance and if we pass on ignorance to you the next generation is going to be ignorant because nobody knows so that's why we have to answer it in this way and everybody has a sex drive almost everybody except for those individuals that are that say that they're asexual but ultimately, ultimately, everybody has a sex drive. And with that drive, we've got to find out what does it mean? How do I handle it? How do I conduct myself? And then also stop penalizing other people because of your sex drive. Because if it was two of y'all doing it, then don't blame the other person of what they did to me. Because if it wasn't a rape, it was a consent. Consensual, yes. That's it. And y'all be clapping so weak, y'all better learn to clap a little better than that when we risking our lives and reputations talking to y'all. Reputation because we're going to take a hit. 
Oh, yeah, we're going to take a hit because I'm checking minds while we're getting hit. Yeah, we're, we're going to take a hit for it. But the bottom line is we got to have a conversation. And I'm going to tell every pastor, I'm going to tell parents and everybody that got an issue with us having this conversation. Let me remind you of something. Had you had the conversation, we wouldn't have to. That's good. That's good, Dad. So you kick rocks with that. Go ahead. If marriage does not exist in heaven, how do I reunite with my spouse? What is the reunion like? Oh, ho, ho. Say that again. If marriage does not exist in heaven. I heard that right here from there. How do I reunite with my spouse? Is this person saying that they are, if the spouse is gone and going to heaven, that that they still want to reunite with their dead spouse? I don't take it that way. All right, well, tell us how you're taking I'm it. I'm taking it like when I get to heaven, how will I reunite with my spouse? Right, which means this is, no, no, no. This means after death. Mm -hmm. oh, have fun. Because I'm Steve Harvey, and that's just, this just the way I see it. I, I, I'm... Okay, so I would there, be more concerned about having my marriage successful right here. Most definitely. As long as I can. Right. I, I don't have time to think about whether I'm gonna kiss you when Jesus comes back. My main concern is getting to heaven, eternal life. And if you're in there and he puts us together, then we good. But right now, earth is for marriage. Earth is for marriage. I think that there is a misunderstanding, and that's one of the issues in the church about misunderstanding concerning scripture and concerning word. Heaven was never made for that. So let's just put that there. Heaven was never made for that. Jesus, is, Jesus addresses it because the question comes to him from the Pharisees, and they ask him, all right, if a woman gets married, her husband dies, then she, um, and she gets married again, husband dies, and she has seven of them, which one is her husband? Jesus then responds and says, that's not what heaven is for, all right? Because now we have to look at what heaven is for. Heaven was actually made for God. It was not made for us. So the question is, is that when we die, where do we go? We go to a place called paradise, which is in heaven, but it is not heaven, but it is in heaven. The Bible teaches us that when the Lord comes back, now we're dealing with Revelations, the 19th chapter, when the Lord um, takes the Antichrist and the false prophet, throws them into the lake of fire, takes Satan, Revelation, the 20th uh, chapter, the first and the second verse, throws him to the abyss, and there is a thousand years there. The Bible says that, that the Lord then takes all of us. That remember, the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the air. He comes then, and he comes then, he... Uh, he uh, Jesus comes then in the, uh, the clouds with, his, with all of us and his angels. We come on the, um, the Mount of Olives. We go through the East Gate. We get to the top of the uh, Temple Mount. He destroys them, and then we are on the earth. Now, please remember, the Bible teaches us, and this is what it says. It addresses the fact that we are not spending eternity in heaven. We are actually coming back here on the earth. The earth was made for us. Heaven was made for him. The earth was made for us. Because the earth was made for us, when then we come back, then will, will there be marriages and things like that? Of course there'll be marriages and things like that. However, that is not for heaven. That is for earth. So let's understand what heaven is for. Let's understand what earth is for and why heaven and earth are different. Heaven is spiritual. It's, a, it's for spiritual atmosphere. Earth is for the natural atmosphere, and it is for flesh. When uh, we are raised from the dead, we are raised. Um, the Bible says that Jesus was raised flesh and bone because his blood was spilled. His blood and his water was spilled for us. We will have a glorified bodies. The Bible says we are turned from mortal to immortality. So that means that on the earth during that time, because we were raised from the dead or either, we were, trans, um, we were translated because of the rapture experience. We are, 
or we are immortals at that point. That means then that we have passed the first transition and the only transition for us, which is the first death. The Bible says, woe unto them that um, have to deal with the second death because the first death, um, because you have experienced the first death, the second death has no authority over you. But when you have to experience the second death, those are the individuals that are going to be thrown into the lake of fire forever. So for that individual that is talking about reuniting with your husband in heaven, you're not going to reunite with your husband in heaven. That's not what heaven is for. But the earth is for that. Now, the next question is, then when I get to earth, then who am I going to be with? Well, God, uh, Jesus is going to be here at this point. And the Bible says his kingdom will be here on the earth. If you look at Isaiah, the first chapter and the second chapter, you will find that his kingdom is going to be on the earth and people will be able to take pilgrimages right to where Jesus is and have a conversation with him. And then we have direction from there. Now I can go into Matthew 25. I can go into Luke 19. I can even go into Luke 16, but it all means the same. Next question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, listen. You're welcome. I think that that was so thorough in its explanation. But now we must continue to think millennial. I keep bringing it back because if this is a millennial writing this question, then we have to say to the millennial something that's missing, and that is, let's say she's 35, let's say she's 37, let's say uh, her husband just died of a stroke and she would like to be with him again. We also have to, we also have to equate it or try to evaluate that she's saying that she will never marry again, which is a discipline. She's saying, I'm not going to get married if I can reunite mm -hmm. with my husband in the afterlife. That is a huge question for a person who grew up maybe in a church that says you can't get married twice or doesn't believe in a divorce. But whoever wrote this, if they're young, I need them to understand marriage, as Bishop said, is for the earth. And if it was my daughter at 38 who married a man and in two years he died, God forbid, and she's in love with him, and that's her first, and she believes God is coming back. We've been believing God's been coming back since our grandparents. Mm -hmm. I would not want my daughter to wait 50 years. Mm -hmm. I would need her to know her husband loves her enough for her to continue her life on the earth and to worry about the rest when it comes. Mm -hmm. I don't want you living a miserable life with an unanswered question about the afterlife. Live life through the word of God. Enjoy what God has presented you on the earth. Exhaust it and don't ask certain questions that you actually are not really ready to live. If you are Generation Z or Alpha and you get married at 21 and he dies uh, when you turn 25, you don't have that much time to think about reuniting. Continue living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a three-part question. Can are you... these millennials asking these questions? Are y'all asking them? These are millennials? Asking about reuniting after death? Whew. These wouldn't have been our questions, though. I got some millennial questions for me, for my parents who are dead. My grandparents, I'll wake them up. Because if they can ask us these kind of questions, right. we need to talk to our grandparents who didn't answer our questions. I don't know if they knew. I don't understand. Our grandparents were saved, sanctified. They were. They were. Hear me. Woke up five in the morning, fully dressed, had on their clothes, newspaper, ham, eggs, everything being cooked. Mm -hmm. Them mothers were sanctified. They but you know what blew my mind? Hmm. All them holy mothers had unsaved husbands. Go ahead and read the question. <laughs> That's true. See, you ain't think about that. Oh, I thought about it. My I just didn't say that. My grandfather wasn't saved not one bit. Mm. 
Go ahead. That's First Corinthians seven. Go ahead. <laughs> Three parts. Can you please speak on fraternities and sororities? Are they of God or do they serve another God? Uh -oh. Example: God Alpha, God Delta, God AKA. That's the first part. Second part. I've heard that during the initiation process, the people joining swear their allegiance to or give their life to another God. Is this true? Third part. Third part. If so, are those people saved and still in a frat or sorority? Okay. All right. All right. I, I, I already know that you are not going to differ on this. Okay. So you want me to talk or you want, you want to talk? What you want? All right, so here's the deal. There are some fraternities and sororities uh, predicated on the fraternity and sorority and who is um, over that particular area will determine how you come into that fraternity or sorority. Some of them, because uh, there are some that are over those... Um, their jurisdictions. Some of them are saved, have a relationship with the Lord, so they're not allowing you to go through some things that the fraternity and sorority may say you need to go through. There are others that say that you need to have an allegiance to something that is not godly and something that is not of God. Anything that tells you to have more allegiance to it then to the Lord, the answer is no. Now, it's just it. The answer is no. Does that mean that people that are in fraternities and sororities are not saved? It does not mean that they're not saved because you were not there when they took their oaths. You don't know what that oath said. Now, for a person that took an oath that said that I want the God of more than Jesus Christ, that person needs to renounce that to say that Jesus is my Lord. Can a person still be in a fraternity or a sorority? In my opinion, I would say you can still be in a fraternity or a sorority as long, as long as your allegiance is number one to the Lord, number two, that you have a conviction that causes you not to stray away from your conviction in the word of God for whatever the convictions of that fraternity or sorority is, if in turn there is a conflict. Now, let me give you another example that means the same thing, but does not have the word fraternity or sorority in it. It is called the laws of the land. There are laws in the land that, that conflict with our walk with God. And we obey the laws of the land as long as it doesn't violate the conviction that we have. This is why when Nebuchadnezzar made the statement, when the music sounds, this is what you're supposed to do. So, and you have to, and, and that's a whole nother conversation. Because it was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that would not bow, but Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel was present. But Daniel was not thrown in the lion's den. Uh, Daniel was not thrown in the lake, Lord have mercy, in the fiery furnace. In the fiery furnace. All right, scripture's all in my head. Um, uh, he was not thrown in the fiery furnace. Well, the question is, why was not Daniel thrown in? The reason that Daniel was not thrown in is because Daniel was on the clock. And because Daniel was on the clock, he was doing things based on what his job said, but even though he did, not, he did not believe the way that Nebuchadnezzar said, he still was not thrown in to the fiery furnace because of his job. However, Daniel got in trouble when he was off work. And he was doing things personal. That's how they got Daniel. So there's the balance there. We have to look at the fact that as Christians and as believers, there are going to be laws in the land that conflict with the word of God. And we cannot stand for that. It is the same thing with a fraternity and a sorority. And that is that I can be here as long as 
you do not try to make me choose between my God and this group. Because if you try to make me choose, my God is going to win. Now, that's my opinion. That's the Steve Harvey moment for a Steve Harvey judge show. You probably don't watch. He says, and that's the way I see it. I, 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 um, the old church was first against letting their kids go to college. See, they didn't know, this generation don't know that. Mm -hmm. They told us, don't go to college. You're gonna go out there, you're gonna start learning too much, you're gonna be too smart, you're not gonna serve God like you used to. They were even against going to college. I'm glad you answered it the way that you did because we're going to stay friends and brothers no matter what because I pledged. Mm -hmm. They say, so you know the terms, my feet got black. I see some of them out there, they're like, let me answer it. But the issue is this. They've never, I can't lie, they've never asked me to serve no other God. So I don't know where the person got this question from. Mm -hmm. See, I have to speak up for those who actually pledged. Mm -hmm. I don't, in any HBCU, they would lose their funding and everything if they were raising cults, taking people's children, introducing them to demons. Mm -hmm. I would have exposed them and sued somebody and got rich without going to school. Mm -hmm. <coughs> They, they, they didn't introduce me to no God, no smoke, no chance. But there's another fraternity. They're called the po -po, po You know, the police is a fraternity. Mm-hmm. 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 Y'all ain't talking, but that's a fraternity. And if you are a police officer and you get pulled over, and you show your shield a badge, you won't get ticketed. You gotta join things that can have your back when no one else does. To me, and I'm leaving it alone because you answered well, church organizations are fraternities. Because they say, we are apostolic, don't go to the Trinitarians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Trinitarians say, we don't believe like them, don't go to them Jesus only people. Then another fraternity, which is Seventh-day Adventists, say first day people ain't saved if they speak in tongues or whatever because you got to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Mm -hmm. So fraternities ain't start in college. They started in church. Church people pledge people. I'm not commenting. We'll be here. Go ahead. How do you support a loved one who wants to marry the same sex and not offend your religion? Um, love does not mean support. If I don't agree with something, I can love you as a person, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to support it because my conviction does not allow me to support it. So you wouldn't show up? No. Let me... This is good. Now you and I can talk. Mm -hmm. The question seems to be asked that if you had a loved one that was going to marry the same sex, mm -hmm. Would you love them enough that even though you don't believe in what they're doing to show up to their event? That seems to be the question. Mm -hmm. You said, no, I don't think that's a sin, not a sin, it's a, it's a preference. Mm -hmm. With the millennials that we're trying to reach, mm -hmm. their rule is if we can't show up, we, sh we should shut up. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just go on and be real rare, because mm -hmm. I have not taken a stance. Mm -hmm. 
I probably would not want to show up to my son's same-sex marriage if he did that. Mm -hmm. I would probably, probably be embarrassed because the world that knows me as Prophet Hall would wonder how did my son turn out against something that I used to preach against. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of com components. Mm -hmm. But I told you, my niece asked me a question, and she said, it's funny that y'all won't show up for gay ceremonies and things, but y'all hire them to play your organ and drums and sing in the choir. Mm -hmm. So we can't go to the event, but we can invite them into our worship. Mm. And we can go to a restaurant and they're sitting there. Mm -hmm. I think from your perspective, because I want you to finish this, mm -hmm. that you're right with your conviction and your persuasion, but I think that we are right at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. I think they would listen to us better if we showed up. And the reason why I'm saying that is I think they're doing what they're doing to see if we care enough to even show up. Hmm. Okay, now, I told your mom, why am I getting on a platform with a man that ain't never sold a dime bag, drug, went to punch? I mean, you ain't did nothing. No, I can't say I ain't done nothing. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know. I, come on, stay as holy no, as I'm making you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but as in comparison to me, right. I've done everything mm -hmm. except that. Mm -hmm, I understand. I got you. I've, 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 and I recognize that there were some things I did that I didn't want to do because I wanted my parents' attention. Uh huh. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. I was hoping that they would show up mm -hmm. just so I could walk out. Mm -hmm. It was their presence that would have stopped my participation. Mm -hmm. wow. When they didn't show up, mm -hmm. I had an extra thrust of hate and hurt mm -hmm. to go into something that I didn't really want to go into. Now, my son ain't gay at all, but if he was to marry a man, I'm going to that wedding and I'm sitting way up front. I'm going to look him in his eyes with tears in my eyes the whole time telling him I love him. While they're doing it, hoping that the love of my presence is stronger than what he's about to get involved with. That's where I stand. I think that my stance is different. If you are asking me to love you enough to come, why didn't you love and respect me enough to know what my conviction was and why are you asking me to do something that I wouldn't do? These millennials don't care about that part. But that's the issue. I know, but they don't care. But that's, but, but, and that's, that's the, I believe that complying, complying with that millennial that says, I'm going to see, I'm not a Bunsen burner. Now, you know how old the millennials are now. I understand. You, no, I'm saying you do know that millennials, how many of you are ma millennials? Do you see their ages? Mm -hmm. I believe the oldest millennial now would be 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you. It would be 42. Mm -hmm. And a millennial at 42 could really give a heck about whether somebody show up. Mm -hmm. But if they invited us, they're not inviting us to approve it. They're inviting us to see how much we love them. They're also, see, it's just a little different for me. Mm -hmm. Now, these Z's and alphas, that's another story. Mm -hmm. Woo. I'm glad you did millennials, but if we ever do an alpha Z move, boy, you're going to need some more Bible. You're going to need three Bibles. <laughs> oh, he think I'm playing, right? You. <laughs> the millennials are at the age like 40 years, 41, 42 uh -huh. where they can make the difference mm -hmm. in how the alphas and z's and us mm -hmm. talk they are the bridge for us to talk to their children and grandchildren and say to them what they can't say 
because children always fight parents, but they love grandparents. Mm -hmm. You see? So you'd be like, I'm going to call your grandmother. No, no. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you to your grandfather's house. Now, when the millennials were practicing same sex and things and the boys looking like girls and girls looking like boys, mm -hmm. they come to their parents' house looking like that. Mm -hmm. But when they go to grandma's house, they're going to change clothes. Mm -hmm. See, so we're talking to the millennials, but the truth is, the Z's and Alphas are watching us. Most definitely. And they're wondering whether we're going to keep it real with them, because mm -hmm. they're going to soon have a conversation mm -hmm. with the Alphas. And know how that conversation is going to start off? Do y'all believe all that crap? Mm -hmm. You believe them two men? You believe Prophet Hall ain't never been a homosexual? Mm -hmm. Dr. Kevin A. Williams, you ever Google him? They gonna come for us. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Whereas before I used to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you, the devil is a liar. The mm -hmm. thing is, you and I have done something that I'm not seeing pastors of our age group do. And that is, we decided to put our realities on the line mm -hmm. and be like, hey, we may not agree on everything, mm -hmm. but let me tell you something, man, I can't. I can't imagine one of my children, me, marrying the same sex. Now the Z's and Alphas and Linus will kill me. Why not? It's love. It's love. I, I, because the way I grew up in marriage, it was male and female. It's not that it's different, but this is all I've seen. Mm -hmm. This new stuff just started coming out within the past few years, mm -hmm. like very bold. Mm -hmm. Like It's like extremely bold. And they're winning. Black people can't get their own 40 acres and a mule. But the LBGTQ got rights. Mm -hmm. And we can't get reparations. Okay? Now, I try not to go into your lane. So I stay out of there. I just stay crazy. Mm -hmm. But the issue is, I dare not let the devil have my children. Mm -hmm. So if I got to show up... Mm -hmm. And the Lord tell me, stand up and rebuke it and cry loud, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not there, there's nothing I can do. I believe that the, the goal that we have is the same. I believe that we're coming at it from two different angles. Yes. But I believe that the goal is the same. And the goal ultimately is what our conviction is. And whether you are there and you rebuke it and you're crying, or whether I am not there, and they're looking at that empty space because I know why he's not here. The result is still the same. It's the conviction that we have about the word. I take it. I, listen, y'all, I think you should clap on that because this is a real sensitive. Mm -hmm. This is a real, to me, that was a sensitive question. Very sensitive question. Because I've seen people, I don't tell much, who have committed suicide on parents not being there. I've seen a lot of things. Yeah and had to counsel it. That's, that's what I do for a living. Um, I have counseled things that I cancel on, if you understand that. Mm -hmm. There are things that I counsel that I don't believe in spiritually, but because it's a secular certificate, you still must speak to that client. Mm -hmm. I have learned more from the secular world than I have from the spiritual world or kingdom world. Because kingdom people, a lot of them tend to avoid the realities of what's going on. And the devil's biggest tool mentally is to always tell a certain group that the next group don't understand what they're saying. That's his biggest one-liner. Yeah. They don't know what you feel. They ain't even listening. That's our biggest argument, ain't it? You're always right. You always want to be right. It's not true. We just don't want you to be wrong like we've been. Mm -hmm. Right. We've been wrong. Very wrong. Go ahead. they four minutes over there, 90 minutes. <laughs> if a person commits suicide, do they still go to heaven? See? Where See, in the I word can answer this question? Look at that. I just said somebody committed suicide. Go ahead. Yeah, you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. That is challenging. And the reason that is challenging is because you're dealing with, is a person able 
to repent. I think that's the first thing that you're dealing with. Um, that's the first aspect. This is going to, I'm getting ready to create a, a windstorm. But um, is a person able to repent? Uh, there are some suicides that are slow. There are some suicides that are fast. That's the first thing. Is a person able to repent? Um, once they realize, look at what has happened. I need to make a decision. And God, I didn't mean to do this. That's the first thing. Second thing is that um, my Bible tells me that every sin can be forgiven but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. I have looked in the Word of God and there are some things in the Word that are challenging. And because they are challenging, I cannot 100% say in every situation that a person that committed suicide has gone straight to hell. I cannot say that. I cannot. There are extenuate, uh, extenuating circumstances. There is mental illness circumstances. There is violation circumstances. There are there's so many different circumstances that can drive a person to make a decision that they've made. And even though we don't like the decision, um, when you're dealing with someone that um, doesn't know how to deal with that pressure, um, they can take that is the only out that they feel that they may have let me let me pivot by stating something and it sounds like i'm going off but i'm not i had a um an abscess to grow in my ear and i didn't realize it I just knew that um, my ear was closing. One morning I got up and my ear was completely closed. Uh, it was shut off. I um, went to a um, ear, nose, and throat uh, specialist. And he said that I'm going to numb it, burst the abscess, and we're going to get you all fixed up. Fine. He does it, and the abscess has nothing but nerves in it. When the anesthesia wore off, he had not prescribed me any prescription for pain at all. Um, I have to call there and tell them that I'm in trouble. I had to call Will and tell him to go and get it. And from the time that they filled a prescription, which is not immediate, to the time that Will got to my home to give me this medication, I remember saying to myself, I need this pain to stop. And I understood at that moment someone killing themselves because the pain was literally unbelievable to the point until death was an option just to make it stop. My point is this, I'm a very strong-minded individual and I had to consider after that situation a person that is not that strong-minded, what could happen with that kind of person? And what would a loving God do concerning that kind of individual? Would he send them to hell? In my opinion, I don't think that everyone that has committed suicide has gone to hell. I just don't.
I think that Judas's suicide was guilt. And for those who have a major issue with Judas, please understand something about Judas that is not preached a lot. And that is that Judas tried to fix it. Yes, he did. By going back and giving the money back, he just tried to fix it. What happened, what drove him to suicide was the church wouldn't help him fix it. And he took the 30 pieces of silver, threw it at the church. They said, it's blood money. We can't take it. And because he heard that, he says, I don't have access to the church. I've betrayed my Lord. And the enemy had his mind because the Bible says at the Last Supper that when Jesus said, someone is going to betray me, Satan entered into him. And so Judas is isolated. And this is why it is important that usually when a person is going to commit suicide, the enemy isolates them to have a repeated conversation to destroy them. And so in my perspective, I am going to say for the body of Christ, we cannot be what the high priest and the scribes and the elders were of saying, we ain't got nothing to do with that. When the truth of the matter is we are our brother's keeper and we're going to have to have and take responsibility that some blood is on our hands. I think that was excellent. I think that was excellent. I think that was excellent. We must remember that the same people that paid him the money are the same people he was giving the money back to. Which it was the church. Mm -hmm. The quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Here's my point. Because I'm on your same page. Except... When in my younger days, I did contemplate suicide. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm a strong man. Mm -hmm. But when you start failing in every area of your life at one time and the church abandons you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that actually, and I'll sh show you where I'm going, is that actually biblical suicide or is that martyrdom? Am I a martyr? This is the reason why I say it. Self-murder is suicide. Mm -hmm. So when Samson, knowing that he, when he destroys others, is killing himself, did he commit suicide? Mm -hmm. With permission? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm just asking. When Saul is about to be killed by his enemies and him and his armor-bearing sons fall on the sword willingly, is that suicide? Mm -hmm. Or were they martyrs? Mm -hmm. There's no way I could live another day knowing I just betrayed God and wake up the next day and spend their money and have a great time. What's crazy is out of all of the disciples, History teaches that Judas and Jesus were actually friends. So forget that he betrayed God. He betrayed his friend. There are some things that some of us should know that we can't live without. Mm -hmm. Suicide is more prevalent now in mm -hmm. the Z's and Alphas and Millennials than any generation in the world. Mm -hmm. It is what's called the easy way out. Mm -hmm. It's called if they don't care, I don't want to be a burden. They keep saying that, that I'm the devil, can't do this. We're pushing people to commit suicide. Because of the words, do what you want to do. I don't care. The devil's a liar. I'm going to heaven. I raised you enough. You, oh, it, it's, it's just where there's a lack of love, there's an intense height 
to kill people, to kill myself. Mm -hmm. Some people do it simply because they want to see if God will finally show up and stop them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the question could have escalated and been like, if God wasn't for suicide, why don't he reveal himself to people? It's a lot of excuses. Mm -hmm. I want to say to the millennials and to the people that are watching, even online, if you think death is the easy way out, you missed it. The best way out is not to die before your time. There is always something worth living for if you take your attention away from what's worth dying for. Shift your attention. Now that's very serious because I've been there. Shift your attention. If I would have killed myself after my marriage went down, after I had a stroke, after I was paralyzed, after I had Bell's palsy, all of this in one season, after the church saying he'll never preach, I'd have killed myself and I attempted to. I did two nice things because most folk who don't want to really die try to die slow. So you never try to. So what they use is NyQuil and a few sleeping pills hoping that they can just go to bed. Now that's folk who really don't want to die. And when they wake up, God's been good to me. Thank you. And they're crying, right? But people who really just jump off a bridge, something else has happened. People who are doing it the slow way, it's because... They've been abandoned. And when I look at who I am today versus that 30-year-old something that wanted to kill himself, man, the 30-something-year-old would have stopped the progress of this man. Mm -hmm. So we need to let people know we're not just giving you Bible, we're giving you personal experience. Mm -hmm. You're not just hearing what the Word of God says, you're seeing what the Word of God can do as well. You can make it. And most definitely. I'm done with that. Most definitely. I know that there's some going to be some people that have an issue with that, but I will say to those individuals, and that's why I'm looking in the camera, I will say to those individuals this. 2001, September 11, two buildings are hit. There are people that are looking down, knowing that the building is getting ready to fall. And they're trying to figure out, do they do this on their own strength or do they allow themselves to be crushed by everything that is around them? Until you're in somebody else's shoes, don't violate their choice. Is the sin in drinking to get drunk or drinking, period? Could it be that it's been said to refrain altogether in an attempt to save people from falling into that sin? <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Read it one more time. Is the sin in drinking to get drunk or drinking, period? Could it be that it's been said to refrain altogether in an attempt to save people from falling into that sin? The Bible talks about not to be drunk. If the Bible talks about not to be drunk, then the question is, is drinking a violation? Now the Bible says that we have the right to drink wine for different reasons. One for the stomach's sake. Um, we have uh, wine with dinners and things like that. So do I say, do I say, I'm not messing with him. You, I'll, just stay away from that mic. So, so um, my perspective is balanced within that. And that is that, number one, whatever you do, do in modesty. That's the first thing. The second thing, and that is that some people are not drinking to get drunk, but it doesn't mean they don't end up drunk. All right. That's good. Okay. That's good. Because the worst thing a person can... It's the truth. That's because good. the worst thing a person can do is drink while you're thirsty. Because you're trying to quench your thirst. 
and when you're trying to quench your thirst, the result is going to be because the alcohol is going to be slow. The swallow is going to be fast, but the impact is going to be slow. And by the time it gets there, you're going to realize I'm in a uh-oh. <laughs> and so when I look at scripture and I'm just a, I'm a Bible guy. So when I look at scripture, I cannot see where having wine is a sin. I cannot see that. But the Bible also says this, and that is that if I'm doing something that's not a sin to me, but it is causing my brother to fall, then I am not to do that in front of my brother. I like that. Because I can cause them to fall by what I'm doing. And so now I have to look at, because the focus, because some people are trying to get drunk, but they're trying to get drunk not necessarily because of drinking. They're trying to get drunk because they're trying to escape yeah, they want to drown out from something that they don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. And so there are different reasons around um, what we're talking about here. So, yes, sir. I, 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 man, that was beautiful. You gave a scientific explanation. I, don't drink while you're thirsty. <laughs> if you drink while you're thirsty, you're going to get into a uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> over here saying how does he know this because <laughs> i got drunk no. <laughs> no. see my whole approach to being here with him was to keep him the perfect holy one and me to be the exposed one but here goes something that's very important i'm not going to answer the drinking part but i'll do this there's a rehabilitation thing. What is it called? AA? Mm -hmm. <coughs> what does that stand for? I close anonymous. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah everybody know it. Mm -hmm. well, they know. How y'all know about that word? <laughs> See, but that's what it is. <laughs> I want to come from this aspect. Most people who are drunkards don't believe they are. Because if you can function while you're in a dysfunction, you're called a functioning alcoholic. You, 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 you follow where I'm going? But then there are some people who found out they were and went through these steps. And now the steps in the class still teach you that even if you haven't done it, you are still an alcoholic. What they say that is, there's always something that could help you relapse. So they say, I am an alcoholic, but I have not done it in so and so years. Here's where the church, I went to a church, and this is a joke, but it's the truth. And the church was having the communion. And I didn't know it either. I was the guest speaker, and this Baptist church used real wine. Mm -hmm. It was cool with me. About that much. Can't even take it to the head. See, he don't drink. He don't know what that is. I told y'all, that man don't. And we're standing there, and the gentleman gets there, and I'm standing near him, and he wants the Lord's Supper, and when he takes the bread, we're fine. When he drinks the cup, he screams. And I said, what's wrong? He says, you've just broken my sobriety. He got a taste of what he stayed away from for 20 years, and it's the church that gave it to him. Mm. Mm. See, you may not see where I'm going, but there are a lot of things that we hear in church that can drive you to drink.
can't do this. Thou shalt not, thou can not, thou will not. Lord, I need a drink. Lord, thou can not. And Lord Jesus, what can we do? I think that when we grew up and I'm done, the church focused, our old church focused on drinking and sex the whole time. To where I don't even have a lot of patience to talk about it. They just talked about it too much. That's right, talk. And the issue is, you don't talk about what you ain't, what you haven't been doing. They knew too much about drinking and sex. Why did you know so much about it? So one day I'm over to my aunt's house. She's the piano player. They call the pianist for the Holiness Sabbath Church. Mm -hmm. She's holy, as far as I'm concerned. Me and my brothers go over there. You know, you play over your aunt's house. And we go in her room, we not search for anything, but we playing hide and go see. Y'all ever heard that game? Nope, not the millennials. Mm -mm. When y'all hiding, y'all seeking something. No, this a game. <laughs> You're hiding, hoping to be found. And we said we was gonna play hide and go seek in my aunt's apartment. So I decide I'm gonna hide under her bed. Crawl under the bed, and I touch a bottle. Lord. So I call my brother, even though we're playing the game, I ain't playing my like, damn. We under the bed. I get out, she comes in from going to the grocery store. Y'all having fun? Mm-hmm. I got your favorite sodas and Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, I've always been that renegade. I'm the eldest. She said, Todd, you're acting funny. What's wrong? I said, I need to ask you a question. She said, what's going on? You know, them old saints don't play. I said, we were playing hide and go seek. She said, okay, and I hid under your bed. Come here. <laughs> Y'all know how the old saying that, you come here. <laughs> Who else was under there? Say, <laughs> so Aaron, both of you, come here. <laughs> now listen. And then they gave, she said what she wanted to say. And that was it. Mm -hmm. My issue was this, if you're going to kill it in other people, don't ask us to hide it. Mm -hmm. See, I'm still back there. My thing is this, wrong is wrong, but don't let wrong be right only for certain people. Mm -hmm. Okay? In drinking, there's a thing called tolerance. Mm -hmm. Some people have a low tolerance. Some people have a high tolerance. I've got friends of mine who can drink all night. Mm -hmm. And I like when they drink. I hate to tell you that because I'm a preacher. Because then they start giving me stop tips and favors. The more they get drunk, they say, and listen, on Thursday, this is going to happen. I'll be like, you need another one? Because they ain't saying. But then I have stupid people that try to mix drinks start talking and crying and telling people's business. You would need to understand that God has made sure that everybody, if you want to drink, you better know your tolerance. Because mm -hmm. I've seen women get raped, molested, and not know it until they get sober. I would not ever, this is me telling the world, preach that it's okay for you to drink. You better find out if it's okay for you to drink. Doctors not telling you it's okay for you to have wine. 
you better find out if it's okay for you to have wine. Because what may work for one may not work for the other. Now, you women, I'm going to crack a joke because y'all looking all serious. Most women don't drink because then that's when y'all get horny and be, hold on, that's too much. Lord, I ain't drinking no more. That's the difference. Men get drunk and want sex. Women get drunk and try to avoid it. That's the difference. Women be like, uh-uh, I can't drink no more. Lord, what was that? Men have the same feeling and try another drink. And it makes us a little stupid and you a little more rational. All right, so if you don't know the company you're out with, don't drink at all. You see what I'm trying to tell you? Because the company you hang with will pay for your drinks, especially when they know they're breaking through a certain layer of skin. Real quiet, but some of y'all got them little bottles in your glove compartment now, but go ahead. All right. This is what we'll do. Um, we'll do one more. And, yeah. I, Are I'm, we going to have to do this like again? Yeah. Would y'all bring more people if we did it again? Oh, they want to bring it to Florida. They want you to fly to Florida, Doc. I flew to you. Maybe you need to come to me. We can fly. Huh? We can fly. We I can mean, make it happen. I mean, it's still, still online. It's just a flight. No, it's just a flight. You know, because I think that right now this is necessary. We have. This is going to be um, the hottest topic on. Yeah, this, on, everybody's going to be talking platform. about this because right now we've got so many questions, so many people still coming on. And um, um, I think this is necessary. I just do. I think it's necessary. It's 319 still on Facebook alone. 319. And 260 on YouTube. And 280 in a private chat that I'm on. Now, listen. Don't ask no more questions till we tell folk to give. Y'all put in the lower thirds how they can sew. Everybody sew. Everyone. Yeah. Especially you in here that's getting the whole gist. And you that come to these things that look serious the whole time, can you sit in the back? Can you put people with facial expressions up front? Or go have a drink. <laughs> I don't see how people can be so serious faced when you've answered a plethora of questions with such versatility that their face remained the same. That meant they were here to judge us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I'm from the hood. I don't need my prophetic for that. Mm -hmm. Sitting up close, doing them little looks. Listen, you got a problem? We can talk about this right after church. Because mm -hmm. it's not good to come to be judgmental. We're here to, give to bridge a gap. I give answers. All right. I think that I think your people should have it because I I don't know on your All right. lower so, thirds. So we've got um, this here. I put it on the lower thirds. Um, um, dollar sign praiseologist. Yeah, one. But now that's fine. I just want people to just go ahead and give. I just want them to right. give. I think people should give today. I don't think we've answered more questions than we said. We stayed on for two hours versus an hour and a half. Okay, I think people, there are people in this church giving out envelopes. We still got real ushers up in here. Sure enough. They're giving out envelopes, and a man got a bag with a long stick for no COVID contraction. Look at that. The receiving basket. It's called what? A receiving basket. I got to get one. Yeah. Tell me where you got it, bro. I have to get one. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hold that out a little bit. Look, I got to get one. See, I think everyone should start sewing right now into uh, this conversation, into this risky dialogue, the dialogue that could literally save a generation. Mm -hmm. I think everyone should sew their best. There are people in here who probably won't give it all, and that's a shame. There are people in here who have a low tolerance for giving. See? Mm -hmm. Then there are people in here that have a high tolerance 
for good information. This has saved someone's daughter, son, marriage. It has. It I'm has. serious, someone's parent. This is critical, and I'm sure that the last question, even though she may not know it, will be prophetic for both of us. Watch. It is important that you stop taking, because the millennials feel like they have an entitlement. Z's and alphas feel like they should get what they want. We had to earn ours. Mm -hmm. They feel entitled. Mm -hmm. So the offerings will get low because people don't feel like they should sow into what helps them grow. Whereas when we went to church, we had two or three offerings. Mm -hmm. We can't get folk to give in one. But when we went to church, there was a Sunday school offering. Yep. And we battled to see who raised the most money so we can have the banner in our little section. Mm -hmm. Then we had a first offering during church. Then we had the pastor's offering. And then we had another service you know, in the afternoon. And then we had a service at night. Mm -hmm. Then if we went to another church, we had to raise an offering for their pastor. Mm -hmm. This generation has lost the unction of value. Of, of understanding giving you um if you go to a lecture you, you you give if you go to a concert you give if you know when you go to school you give you know and this is a school yeah, right is. now this is a school this is a seminar and, and the way that you and i are going to if the lord should keep us doing this the way that i know we can craft this mm-hmm make it even a little more pro, pro, pro professional mm -hmm. I don't think anyone can do it the way that we could actually do it I agree with you and I don't have a lot of patience because I don't like social media much because it does a lot of damage but when I see that someone wants to do something positive mm -hmm. that could really help people I'll give it my all but we can't give our all to people that won't give us none at all Exactly. All right. The Bible said we give you of our spiritual, you give us of your carnal. It's just an exchange. Your money will not go to waste. Sow it and watch God grow it. Let's do that. All right. Back to the question. Let's hear what Dr. Williams has to answer now before we go back to sleep. Hey, man, did I tell you that I did a thing called jazz in the Bible? Tell me about it. Yeah. Yeah. Prior to the question... Last night, no, Wednesday night, my church was turned into a club. Are y'all feeling me? All right, we'll talk. The whole church became the 1403 Lounge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had more millennials than I had ever seen. I hired, I brought in jazz musicians because it's jazz month. Mm -hmm. Saxophonists, two great singers, and I had a DJ scratching. Hmm. My old saints who rebuke everything was up there dancing. Mm. One of them said she had never danced in all her life. That was hard to believe. In all her 75 years, she had never had a secular dance. I cried because I've never understood that the church has handicapped the way people live. Gospel music sounds like R&B. They charge more than Uncle Charlie Wilson. I asked an artist to come, he said $40,000. Not that I had it or didn't have it, but I will pay for Stevie Wonder before I pay for a gospel artist at $40,000. Mm -hmm. The church has just taken the world sound and put it to spiritual words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas in my mama's day and grandmama's day that made us get born, they were dancing the clean music, loving each other, no divorces. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting a divorce every five minutes. Mm -hmm. 
because something's missing. It's called balance. Mm -hmm. They danced. We met three millionaires. Mm -hmm. People came and said, we didn't know a church was over here. Who's the pastor? Now that's when I was going to lie. I'll be like, not me. <laughs> the Lord said, tell them you're the pastor. I said, I'm the pastor. Is there anything you need done around here? I said, excuse me? I want my company to dedicate their work to fixing your church, whatever the roof, whatever you need done. I said, are you serious? He said, you don't understand. I was coming here not to come to your jazz in the Bible. I was coming here to see what got my daughter to come to a church at all. He said, my daughter ain't been to church. She don't believe in God from the past 10 years. Something happened at her last church. She said she'll never go to church. But one of your members invited her last month and she said, I'm going every time they have one. If we can create platforms mm -hmm. that will give people a voice, mm -hmm. give them a right to let them know we don't control them, but we do help them navigate through life's difficult situations. Mm -hmm. You cannot go on a honeymoon with James Cleveland. Mm-mm. 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 I love Bishop T.D. Jakes, but I can't bring him. And they clutched his hands. I cannot. It's not that it's not smooth, but you know that's Bishop Jakes. If you made a love CD, oh Jesus, and it's your voice in my hotel room, uh -oh. what is Kevin doing in my room? Mm -hmm. But if I hear, can you woo woo woo? I'm good with that. <laughs> and I think that we're doing what four generations before us wouldn't do, because they because they did it on the slide. We'll let people know it's all right to have questions and it's all right to experience living. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have questions. It's okay to experience life. Yeah. And when life gets hard, ask the hard questions, but bring them to people that are not hard on people. Mm -hmm. I think you've done well uh, taking on this um, hard task. It's gonna get harder. But I hope well, you've done well. Well, I actually think we have done well. Yeah, you did well. I'll go to Revelations 20 and I'll go to 17. I could go to Luke 8 and I'll move over here to Matthew 25. That's my guy, y'all. Come on. So we got a lot of questions online about um, weed. Does uh -oh. the Bible say anything... <laughs> <laughs> Does the Bible say anything against the use of medical herbs such as weed? <laughs> you need to pick your mic. Would you, would you pick your microphone up? <laughs> All right, I'm going to start this only because I know he wants to close it with scripture. He wants to have. I can already tell he wants the final say to be theological. <sighs> You've been saved for how long, Dr. Williams? I got, I, I've been saved since October 1978. 78? Mm -hmm. And how many years is that? Y'all clap. 78. Some of you weren't even born. 88, 98, 2008, 2000. 44 years. 44 years. <laughs> 78. 78. Right. I've been saved since 79, January the 1st. Okay. I don't know how many years that is. 45 years. You've been saved too long to have ever smoked a joint. Mm. 
I was around when they was doing it. <laughs> Your mother's here. Saints, I'm trying to get them there. Viewers, I'm trying to get them there. This question is deep. My question is, have you ever had a joint? Yeah. Okay. Since 78. Somebody clap for you. There's like, yeah. Which means they're going to finally join your church. <laughs> I remember Mother Butler. Uh -huh. Her name was Mother Butler from St. James Holiness Church, 89 Legion Street between Sutter and Pickett in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. Whenever the mothers were cast out a demon, they were named that demon. So Mother Butler one day asked me, what's your problem? And I told her that I had had sex with a certain person in the choir. Mm -hmm. Y'all laugh, but I need to admit something else that could cause a whole nother dialogue. I have never fallen with anyone outside of church. Y'all got something you want to talk about now? Mm -hmm. I just saw somebody be like, yep. I never mess with the Phil Philistines. Mm -hmm. See, that's a whole nother dialogue. Mm -hmm. But she opened the doors because the mothers back then that lived on top of the church had keys to the main church. Mm -hmm. I told her I wanted to be delivered, and she was dead serious. I was serious, because mm -hmm. I was a young preacher then. She took me into the thing, her and Mother Granger, and they, we bind the fornicating demon, and they just going in. They, I mean, they calling his name more than Jesus. Mm -hmm. I was like, call Jesus. Like, I want to, like, let's call Jesus. and Stop saying fornicating. Mm -hmm. We bind the fornicating demon, and they said it's done in Jesus' name. And for a while, I hadn't done it. Mm -hmm. Then I did it again. She said, oh, it done came back. <laughs> See, y'all laughing, but mothers in the church back then were nosy. Did it come back? Mm -hmm. Let's go back and pray. Because that was their job. That's how they felt their self-value. So one day, I just told her, here's where I enter the question. Mm -hmm. I said, I need you to stop talking to the fornicating demon because I don't ever fornicate until I have a joint. Mm -hmm. See, folk who did real weed knows you either get the munchies or you get horny. Mm -hmm. See, that's how I know when y'all on medicinal. Mm -hmm. Medicinal just make you go sleep in no pain, but that real stuff be like, give me some dipsy doodles and some cheese. See how y'all left? It even make you remember phone numbers you thought you forgot, 718-325. Let me see if that person's still there. That's how I know you didn't do it long because you don't know these symptoms. Mm -mm. <laughs> Only one time I ain't even finished. I was like the devil. See? <laughs> and as soon as she called out that marijuana demon, that was the only time I ever fell on the floor. Because she hit the parent instead of the child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whether I believe weed is right or wrong, I tend to not stray in the direction because it births things for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, I don't, and I've studied it. I can't um, find scriptures that you may have located mm -hmm. um, in first or second John or third John or wannabe John. Weed has never hurt me. It just opens me up mm -hmm. to a world that's so smooth. All right, let me leave it alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes you, because you never finished one, it makes you take off. And I don't want to talk about it because you may want to go back and finish it. So let mm -hmm. me not talk about this. <laughs> <I'm going. laughs> There's not a case where weed has made someone kill anybody, mm -hmm. rape anybody. It's funny, 
that used to be bootlegging for drinking, then the world came and prohibition and now alcohol, mm -hmm. you can use it. And now after incarcerating all of the drug dealers, weed is now medicinal. The thing that they allowed us to do that they called illegal and then put us in jail and gave us criminal records. But you learned how to make it, how to mix it, how to serve it by incarcerating the inventors. Preach to the preacher. Amen. This is the one thing you may not know because you never finished it. And I knew it was going to be a little prophetic. We talked about masturbation. We talked about uh, artificial paraphernalia. That's what you called it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a dildo. We talked about. <laughs> we talked about same sex marriage and everything. But no one ever knew that the substratum of most of this is weed. The basis of most of this is weed. Hmm. There are people, 60% of most folk who go to church do weed. Quiet. <laughs> Some of them use it now in a vape form. Mm -hmm. As long as you see new smoke shops opening up on every corner, mm -hmm. medicinal using each other's prescriptions. If you come up with a biblical answer for this, you may cure America or get assassinated. <laughs> You're crazy. I mean, you both. <laughs> because most folk who don't do the other things we mentioned mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. And if we killed everything and killed this, they may think about suicide. Maybe I'm saying this and I'm done. What is it that we can do mm -hmm. after we have killed everything that's been mentioned? Mm -hmm. What is a component that can be invited into the Christian walk that makes its life exciting? Mm -hmm. Don't Jesus me tonight. Don't be like he's the savior. He's coming back for a place. I know about that since mm -hmm. I was three. Mm -hmm. I can quote it. As a matter of fact, I sang more, prayed more, cried more when I was high. Mm -hmm. You see how quiet it got? Because when you grew up in the church and you had your first drink, you'd be like, the Lord go kill me. My grandmama, oh man. And you would tell your boys off, man, sing with me. Don't play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever is really in you comes out when you're under the influence. Mm -hmm. So I figured I'd be a preacher. I thought I wouldn't, but every time I got under the influence of something, I feel the conviction of God stronger than I did when I was sober. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But what do we fill this gap with when we've been told that everything that brings us joy, what can the church tell us that we can have fun doing outside of church? I'm glad you didn't finish it. Where, where is it? Back in 78. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, um, Lord have mercy. There's so much that I can say about this subject. Um, the first thing, and that is that you have to ask the question, why do people do it? And one of the reasons I think that people are unaware of why they do it is because um, 
People say they need a calm, they need a peace, they need to relax, they need to get away from whatever. And when I look at all of the reasons of why it is done, it actually are the same reasons or the same benefits that the Holy Ghost brings. Wow. If we're not careful, we can be a substitute for the Holy Ghost because we want peace, so we go to weed. We want comfort, so we go to weed. We want clarity, so we go to weed. And if we look at all of the things that we say that we need weed for, That's huge. what we're saying is, I'm choosing weed over the infilling of the Holy Ghost because I can get it without the conviction of other things that the Holy Ghost is going to bring me into. And so, and this is why we have to be careful of um, burning substances um, like sage. Um, because what, you're, what you can do is invite a spirit in the atmosphere and then the spirit is waiting for your vulnerability the worst thing that you could do let's go with medication the worst thing you can do is medicate someone that is demon possessed because what you're doing is making the person more vulnerable mm -hmm. to the spirit that is trying to take them over the same thing when it comes to weed or cocaine or other things because when you say well weed is natural well so is cocaine That when you look at, so is heroin. All of them are natural. All right? Poison ivy is natural, but you ain't smoking it. See, the, it's, 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 it, when you look at, it, the, the thing is not what's natural. That's, that's not the issue. Because when somebody says it's natural, don't get in a smoke screen about that. The issue is not, is it natural? The issue is, what is its purpose? Because everything that God has created, when we say, well, God created it, but he created it for a purpose. And sometimes we take the creations of God, use it outside of its purpose, and then try to blame God for how we used it. That's good. That's good. And that's us. That's not on God. That's us. You know, he made animals, but he didn't make, us, he didn't make animals for us to sleep with them. So you have to be able to look at what was the purpose of God creating the different things that he created. And so we have to be careful about things, subject matters, of burning things and things like that, which is a whole nother element. Please also look at the fact that in the, when you go through the um, outer court to the inner court to the holy place, there is incense being burned. And that incense represents the prayers of the saints, but it also attracts the presence of the Lord. So there's a special kind of incense that is burned. But what other kind of things can be burned to attract other things? And so this is why it is important, because usually when people are under the influence, they become philosophers, they become... Um, that's a fact. It, it, it's true. It, you, 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 that's you, a fact. You're just you're, you're a scientist. You're, you're everything, because you you have the answers to everything. But we have to bring it back to really what is the purpose of doing it? Because if how do I know if something I shouldn't be doing something? I I answer that by saying, what is the purpose of me doing it? And if I find the purpose of me doing it, and the purpose of me doing it is a part of the description of what the Holy Ghost and having a relationship with God is supposed to do, then the enemy is trying to sneak a substitute in my life. And I have to make sure that I'm not ignorant of Satan's devices or what he may do. Now, that, I think that is 
uh, without going into too much scripture about things being burned and, and, and things like that and, and what it attracts. Because this is why when you're dealing with witchcraft and you're dealing with uh, the occult and things like that, all of that are things that are being burned. And this is why I think it's important that we have these conversations because um, in this era, there's a lot of things burning. There's a lot of things burning, not just weed. There's a whole lot of things burning. And all of those things are burning for a particular reason. I'm going to say something else, and I hope that it helps. The weed of the 70s ain't the same weed of 2022. Look at me. Those are two different yeah, weeds. No, this, those are two different weeds. You never even finished yours. It ain't the same. <laughs> It's two different weeds. I didn't just use it. I sold it. I rolled it. I, I mean, mm -hmm. made my money doing this. It's not the same. No, when, when you start dealing with things in science, um, when you start dealing with things in science, because mixing weed is also a science, when you start dealing with things in science, and whether it is weed and things like that, that's mixed in science, whether you're talking about, um, when you're talking about changing genders and things like that that's mixed in science when you're doing any of that that's mixed in science now we're getting into something that is that the enemy can use and it is a god violation uh, the bible talks about it i think in first timothy the sixth chapter and maybe the 20th verse and it talks about the fact that we can't get into those oppositions of science that causes us to get away from the character of God. Let me, I didn't even move. Y'all done did it. He done touched it. See, that thing for science and mixtures and things, pharmaca, is where we get that word witchcraft, pharmacy. That's where we get all of your drugs and paraphernalia, even from the doctor. They would call it farmer, pharmacy, form of witchcraft. But if it's created for the right purpose, it works because nothing you take heals you. It just lessens the pain and the symptoms. That's all. But it doesn't heal. First Timothy uh, 6 and 20. If you want to throw it up there, you can. But this is what it says. It says, O Timothy, um, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings or talkings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called, which some professing hath erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. When you start dealing with science and those issues concerning science, now you're starting dealing with things that the scripture says that can cause you to err. And so a lot of times people don't even think scriptures like that are in the book. But the reason why we have to be so studied is because the enemy wants to use anything that he can to trap us up in it. And we have to be knowledgeable concerning the word to make sure that the enemy doesn't set a trap for you that you get stuck. I hope tonight has been great for you. Have you all enjoyed? I said, have you all enjoyed? As you remain standing and we prepare to close, I want to tell those who have just signed on to these platforms, this would be a good time for you to sow. You have sold within the brick and mortar. We thank you all for your giving. But you that are watching in the hundreds, it will be unfair for you to eat and not leave a tip. You don't have to pay the bill, but you can leave a tip. It is good to sow where you grow. We want you to get seed in the ground. The ways to give will be back on the screen. Sow into the kingdom of God, and let's do it now. What I do want to say before I exit, and Bishop will give you the next time we will be doing this online or and in person, we'll be mixing it up, because you'll see it online probably quite often in a minute. I know he's gonna call me with, you know, haul the Lord. <laughs> Did you see what God is doing? You know, 
So I can expect this. Um, I could expect that if there was a real creative genius who owns a real platform for a TV show who wants to catch it, y'all can just call us and put us on the main screen before we do it ourselves. And I can't say that God won't make a way because he has, but this was too good to just do it and let it go. But I do want our audience to know, and y'all need to look at me, y'all need to be more vocal Y'all need to applaud more. You need to clap more without stage hands saying clap. We don't need any fabricated, but church folk don't respond on healthy things. So you gotta learn that when you want more of a thing, you cheer it. You follow me? Because then it makes the people who are the... They learning. They learning. It just makes the creative juices of the people researching go deeper Amen. without we. <laughs> All right, we want y'all blessed. We want you to take your rightful place. I wanna close my portion by saying this. We are in the race running together, but in a relay race, the short version until our next conversation, that whoever we hand the baton to cannot run in another lane. Okay, so the race does not change the lane. The problem I have with this generation is y'all want the baton, but you don't want to stay in the lane. Okay, y'all want to become so ingenious that you're doing something that God don't even understand. Right, I want to do it like this, and we're going to do it like this. I'm cool with the tattoos, the earrings. I've had them all my life. That was before salvation. I've had earrings in my ear since I was a four-year-old child. My mom was Puerto Rican. The church would never understand it. Puerto Ricans are raised different than just black people. All right? If I had my hair, you will see it, but it is going to be with the Lord. <laughs> see, yours is nice and coarse, but if I had my hair, my hair would be down my back and I'd still be preaching. See, because that's a part of my culture. You understand? But most people weren't ready for it. Now the world has shifted. They're now saying, come as you are, and meaning it, because if not, they're going to have a closed church. Once they come as you are, it's the preaching and the correct ministry that makes the person that's eating healthy change their appearance. We can't change you until we challenge you. All right? But I don't want y'all taking what we're offering and using it in another lane. Stay in our lane. The race is not run if the next person running jumps into another lane. We lose just because we shifted lanes. You go ahead and close us, because you the man. If, if the book of Ephesians, Ecclesiastes, <laughs> Esther, that's all the Bible books that start with an E. Don't worry, the next one, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna quote every scripture in the Bible. Watch, y'all gonna come up and be like, I'm loaded. Go ahead. First of all, can we give Dr. Hall a hand? He has come all the way here from Orlando, Florida. Can we give him a hand? I want to say publicly, number one, I think that our chemistry is great. Um, I do. I think our chemistry is great. Because not often do you have two people um, with two different perspectives, but they still have a very good chemistry, and you still get what you want. So I want to say publicly, thank you, um, because... This has been great. This has really been great. To, um, to everybody that's been watching, we, we stated and we committed to 90 minutes. Well, we are way past 90 way minutes. Past. And on top of that, when she told me, she just told me how many questions were left, we could never get finished by tomorrow night this time with the amount of questions that have come in. We couldn't. So what that says to me is, is that since we could not get to all the questions, that doing it again may be a great thing for us to do, all right? And so, amen? So this is what I want to do. What we'll do is um, we'll do one like a live, um, and then let's do another one just like this. I'll, I'll figure out, we'll look at some dates and everything like that. I want you to come back 
and we'll maybe go to Florida as well, all right, and, um, and do all this. And I'll be talking about, yeah, yeah, let's go to Florida, and then Bobby up in Florida, be like, where y'all at, online? <laughs> or, or go to Florida, watch it be online while you're at Disney World. Really? All right, so... so <laughs> So, so um, I think that this is great for those individuals that are watching. Please make sure uh, that you give, and uh, uh, you can give uh, to the church. You can give uh, to Dollar Sign Praiseologist. You can give to Dollar Sign Dr. Kevin E. Williams. Um, I'm going to. He had to fly here. We got to make sure that we take care of his room and flight and and things like that, and make sure that we give him a good offering as well. Amen. 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 So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask because um, the people have already given. For those of you that are online, I am going to ask. Um, I want 30 people to give $100 or either um, um, 60 people to give $50. And this is why, because I want to make sure that he's taken care of. I really want to do people right. I think that when you bring people to your house, you ought to treat them really, really good. I really do. And so I want um, um, those of you that are online or if there's somebody here that wants to do that after this is over, please do that. I want to close out. Um, we, still have, we still have a lot of people still watching. I mean, they're still watching, I guess, hoping that we're going to answer their question. Let me tell you, we ain't answering no question tonight. All right. But what we will do is this, and that is that we will do it again. Uh, I want to thank you for being here, audience. I want to thank you, uh, those of you all that are online. I want to thank you. Uh, this has been a successful night. I really do believe that. Let's pray together, okay? Lord, thank you for this time, and thank you for these generations coming together to get answers so that we can further kingdom agenda and have a better understanding and clarity. God, breathe upon each and every individual Get us home safely, protect us, and let this be a positive dialogue and conversation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have a wonderful night to all. everybody. God bless. Let's close out with a good clap. Excellent, excellent. Have a good night.